Working from PTC, and I'm honored and thankful for Stuart extending the invitation to me to be able to speak to you all today about PTC MathCAD worksheet libraries. So um, before we get started, I thought that it would probably be a good idea just to set the stage for what PTC MathCAD is. I think everybody joining today is probably already familiar with that. Um, but essentially, I just have a couple slides here. PTC MathPad is engineering calculation software. And uh, when we're working in MathPad, we are documenting our methods, our assumptions, our decisions. And we're also capturing our calculations in natural math notation. So it's a very intuitive environment for engineers to be able to do their engineering work, calculations, solving, analyzing, but at the same time, documenting and, and writing down any decisions that are made, any assumptions that are made, so that at the end of the day, essentially, you have this online notebook that captures the engineering work. And so that's what MathCAD really is. Now, today, we're focusing on the MathCAD worksheet libraries. And so those are the math libraries are uh, amazing files that can be used as starting points and they're they're actually very good reference material. So the worksheet libraries are installed separately from the core application. The core application is MathPad itself, all that, and then you have that and you can use it. The worksheet libraries are installed separately. And the worksheet libraries are and there, there are a few of them, and I'm going to show you what they are. But they are pre-built. They can build MathCAD worksheets, MathCAD files, that you can use as a starting point for whatever it is you need. So they can be used as templates for setting up certain kinds of problems, for solving certain kinds of problems as reference material for looking at different approaches, figuring out how you would go about doing something in MathCAD. So they're actually quite useful. And, um, and I strongly recommend that, that people utilize them. I use them all the time. And so they're very, very good. And they're fully documented. Okay. Now, each library, and we're going to go through again what they are, but each library contains a collection of topics. Okay, so, so each library has a collection of topics within it. And then each collection of topics, each, each topic has a collection of worksheets. Okay, so, so there's the library as a whole. In that library, there are collections of topics. And then for each one of those topics, there's a collection of worksheets. Okay, and all of those worksheets, those are the templates that I'm talking about. So if we look at this next slide, I listed out the libraries here. And so there's an applied math library. Remember, in that library, there's a collection of topics. And then each one of those topics has a collection of worksheet examples. So the applied math, an education library, uh, Rourke's Formulas for Stress and Strain, 6th edition. So that one, that one I think is a little bit, it's probably worth pointing out, that one's a little bit different in the way it's set up because that doesn't contain a, a collection of, of other topics. It is Rourke's Formulas. It's the actual published book, Rourke's Formulas for Stress and Strain, 6th edition, and we've taken that book and we've put it into MathCAD worksheets. So we're going to take at that. But then there's also a library for mechanical engineering, civil and structural engineering, electrical engineering, and then we have volume one, two, three, and four. So volumes one, two, three, and four, those contain a pretty good cross-section of, of topics. So these are the libraries. Now remember, each library contains a collection of topics. So now let's take a look at what the topics are. Okay, so these are the topics. So, uh, and, and you can probably guess at 
of these as far as which library they would go into. For example, the electrical library would probably contain electrical power systems, which is listed on the lower left-hand corner here. Uh, maybe uh, signal processing, which is on the right column. So these are the topics, okay? So building structural design, thermal analysis, chemical engineering, data analysis, differential equations, and so remember these topics, each one of these has a collection of templates or worksheets, okay? And then these topics go into the libraries, okay? So the mechanical library would probably contain mechanical engineering solved problems, maybe finite element beginnings, um, and probably some other ones. Now, if we look here in the center column at the very bottom, we see something called quick sheets. So the quick sheets uh, are example templates that are more application-based towards engineering problems. So the quick sheets contain things like a control system setup. Um, where you might have a transfer function or some or in a feedback loop. So they contain examples that are more relevant to engineering applications, whereas some of these other ones are more brute force oriented. Um, so that's that's a little bit different. The quick sheets are are very, very good, okay? and and those are actually included in. I think all of the libraries, so that's that's good. So let's go ahead and take a look at how these install and how they work. So I'm going to switch over to MathCAD. And so in a second, you'll see your screen's update. And so here we have MathCAD. And I have this. Uh, pipe diameter worksheet up and loaded here and I thought that maybe just before we go into the worksheet libraries just so that everybody is is familiar uh, we can just take a quick look at this so this is what MathCAD looks like if you aren't familiar with MathCAD this is a optimization problem okay so we have a pipe diameter uh, that we're solving for given this problem uh, we want to deliver a certain amount of fluid through a pipe in a reservoir of a certain depth and those other um, properties of the problem that we're dealing with. So we have some variables, the roughness of the pipe, the length, 2,200 feet, the loss coefficient, the fluid density, the viscosity of the fluid, the depth of the reservoir, and the flow rate. So if we scroll down, the simple sketch of the problem and again we need a certain amount of fluid depending on the fluid it's going to have a certain viscosity and and density and so then we have a certain distance we need to cover and we need to know what the minimum pipe diameter it is that we need so this is how we solve this problem in MathCAD and so this is a solve block and those are standard pipe equations there and we're going to ask MathCAD to find a solution here for the Reynolds number, the friction factor, and the pipe diameter. And ultimately, it's the pipe diameter that we really care about. So we come out of here and we can see that the minimum pipe diameter is 1.26 inches. So this is what MathCAD is. And if we go back to the worksheet libraries, I'm actually going to pull up Windows Explorer and show where the worksheet libraries live once you've installed them. So this is my Windows Explorer here, and you can see here, change your installation directory, but if you just install them to the default, it's going to go into your files PTC directory. But once you install these worksheet libraries, you can see them here, and each of them has its own folder. Okay, so some of these names will look familiar by now. Applied Math, Chemical, Civil Structural, Education. So if we click into one of these, if we click into Worksheet Library Volume 1, we're going to see the collection of topics that
that goes into volume one. Okay, remember I said each library contains a collection of topics. Each topic contains a collection of worksheets. So these are the topics that go into the volume one library. Okay, so there's quite a few here, structural design, thermal analysis, chemical, differential equations. So volume one and two are solid. They contain a very good cross-section. You can see here we have power systems, we have differential equations, we have some structural and thermal stuff. So this is a pretty good cross-section. So now let's click into one of them. I'm going to click into uh, this one down here, Topics in Electrical Engineering. And so now we can see all of the worksheet templates, all of the examples that are available to use. So the beauty of this is you just go in here and you look at these, these names and these titles of these worksheets and you find something that is relevant to what you're looking for and you double click on it, that native MathCAD worksheet in math. So I'm going to click on this one, impedance as a function of Z, and I'm going to double click on it and it's going to load that worksheet right into MathCAD. So here's the pipe diameter that we looked at before, and here's the one that we just opened. Okay, so um, remember I said these are completely documented, and so they're very useful as a starting template, as reference material, and they tell you exactly how to set up this sort of problem in MathCAD. So now, now that we have this loaded, there's a section, MathCAD implementation. So we went through the problem statement. Now this is how we're going to configure this in MathCAD. Transmission line params, the phase velocity, the, sh the capacitance. Um, we just scroll down. This whole problem, this whole engineering problem is set up. It's solved. It's calculated. Plot, uh, real and imaginary impedance. So you can see exactly how to create these plots. Now, a uh, little bit of a useful hint, we throw those in there whenever there's a, an opportunity. So now, now that you have this, you can either modify it and then save off a copy of it. <laughs> I would not recommend modifying this, right, because you want your, your core library to remain intact. But now that you've opened this, you can go here and save off a copy, and then you're good to go. Okay? And then you just change your parameters and update your plots. So, so that's how these work. So now let's actually go back over here to our directory. And we're going to go back to the volume one. And now we're going to click into building structural design. Okay, so we're still in volume one. Now building structural design if we look at these, we can see here, so there's 33 files in here, all different examples that are related to structural engineering. Okay, so if we look at any one of these, we'll just do the same thing that we did before. So I'm going to click on uh, this one, Continuous Beams. I'm going to open it in MathCAD. And so here it is. Okay, and again, same thing. These all have the same format. They're completely documented. They start with the description of the problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, and then they go into how to set that up in MathCAD. 2D schematic of the, of the beam, input variables, the loads, the dimensions, the flanges, all of these input variables are all set up. So you would just take this save off a copy, and make this, okay? And, and by the way, here for the, um, the flange width, the web width, the beam thickness, the slab thickness, the reason that we're seeing three numbers, those are vectors, the reason that we're seeing three numbers there is because we're doing these calculations for three, uh, for a nominal max and a min. So we're, we're putting some tolerance into the calculations. So that's why we're seeing vectors where you might expect individual values. 
um, we're including tolerance in the calculation. So that's probably a good example of how these worksheet libraries can be helpful if you're not sure how to do that kind of thing, then you can come into this and you can see an example of how to set that up in MathCAD, okay? So, uh, so as I scroll through here, you can just get an idea for how these examples, um, how they work and how uh, comprehensive they really are, They're actually very comprehensive. So here are some of the material properties and constants. And so, um, so I'll just continue to scroll down. And I think we're just about halfway through this file. And so if you look in the lower left-hand corner here, you can see we're on right now out of 29. Okay, so this is a 29-page document. And so that's, again, a good data point on how comprehensive and how complete this particular example template really is. Okay, and this is a lot, a lot of, a lot of engineers that deal with um, concrete, prime C, they have um, had to do things like this because there needs to be a compensation factor in MathCAD for the unit of PSI. So we get a lot of calls on how to set something like this up, but again, it's in this example file, so then you can see exactly how to do it. All right, so we probably don't need to go through all 29 pages. I'll just go quickly, quickly, quickly to the very end so that we can see how it all wraps up at the, at the very end. So um, again, you can see all of these equations are set up. And you know what else we can do here? We can take this, if, this calculation here if we wanted to use it, and we can copy it. Don't, maybe, maybe we don't necessarily want to start with the whole 29 Maybe we just want one, one part of it, one page or two pages or one specific calculation. So we can come in here, we can copy this, and then paste it into our own document, and, and then go from there. Okay, so it's sometimes easier to copy these things than to type them in again from scratch. So any of this stuff can be copied and pasted. Okay, so these are not copy protected. Um, Anyway, so we can take whatever we need out of them and, uh, and use that content in our own work, okay? So anyway, I said I was going to go to the very end, so let's just hop to the very end here. And so here's the summary, and so this is basically the end results, the final results just listed out here, and so that should do it. Um, well, we're still only on page 26. And so now we're at the end. Okay, so this is the, uh, the final word on this one. So theoretical calculated areas of reinforcement that are required. And so um, that should give everyone a pretty good sense of what these examples look like. Now, let's go back over here, back into our... We're still in Volume 1, okay? We're still in Volume 1, and again, I'll just refresh here. So these are all of the things that are included in Volume 1. And um, so again, it's a good cross-section. So a couple of things from electrical, a couple of things from, um, you know, finite element be beginnings, physics, programming in MathCAD, um, and then differential equations, too. If anybody is doing like differential equations or, um, you know, solving these sorts of problems, there are lots of examples on different sorts of differential equation problems in here. Um, here, nonlinear, first order, second order, a single equation, system of equations, different algorithms. So there are so many examples in here of differential equations. And so again, I can just click on any one of these um, and it'll, population dynamics, this will open in MathCAD, now we know, and so then we can take a look at that problem in MathCAD. So, 
let's go back to our, our Windows Explorer and get out of volume one. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to the root and I am going to click into some of these libraries just so we can grasp what's in them. Okay, so I'm going to go into Applied Math. So these are the topics in applied math. And you'll see a lot of duplicates, right? So differential equations we just saw in volume one. It's also here in applied math. Okay, and, and the one thing that I like about the applied math library is that a little bit more concise than the other libraries. Um, it's, it's more, I feel like, Applied Math Library are very relevant. These are all that engineers want to be able to do. Okay, so um, there's differential equations again. I'll go there because we were just there. But I talked earlier about the quick sheets. So the quick sheets are very, very real world. Okay, so these are templates that are specific to different engineering application areas. Okay, so if we click into Applications, um, we can see some examples here. And so, for example, Beam Def, that's Beam Definition. So I'll just click on that, and it's going to open. Um, so this is a example. And so it's pretty, remember I said these are more concise. So this one's only one page, but um, it's a very short and concise beam deformation analysis. Okay, so you can just put in your inputs for your beam, look at a deflection, figure out the points of max and min deflections, um, and you're done. Okay. So those are, those are the quick sheets here. And if we go into solving and click one of these, let's do a nonlinear uh, problem. Okay, so this is a nonlinear optimization problem. And so this just shows you how to solve um, with a solve block. Okay, and so here we want to minimize um, the output of the function f and solve for x and y. Okay, and so, so these are actually quite useful. So let's go back over here again. So this is the applied math. Okay, so solving an optimization statistics. I can click in there. There are all of the statistics templates, different types of distributions, hypothesis testing, variance, standard deviation, probability, um, a lot of statistics examples here. So if you're working with data, a lot of data, and you want to do statistical analysis on that data in MathCAD, um, these Examples are fantastic. So you can come in here and um, run your data through. You can just open up one of these, swap out the data that's, that comes with the template for your own data, and um, do any kind of statistical analysis that you want to do using this as a starting point. Okay, so that's the applied math. Theory. Okay, so these are the things that are in. These are the topics in applied math. Let's go back here to the root. And let's take a look at the civil structural. So the civil structural contains building structural design, building thermal analysis, quick sheets, and miscellaneous is always um, have a, some, some problems, some templates that don't really fall into any specific topic per se. They might have you know a little bit of mechanical and structural in one worksheet. So um, we put them in this category called miscellaneous. Now, notice here in the civil structural that Rourke's formulas is not listed here. Okay, so Rourke's formulas is actually a completely independent separate library that stands on its own. Okay, so Rourke's formulas, it's, it doesn't go into, it's not a topic that goes into any of these other libraries. It's a separate standalone library on its own. So that's why we don't see it here as part of the Civil Structural Worksheet Library. Now, um, education, this is more geared towards 
Um, so there's a lot of physics in here and um, solving, optimization, topics in physics. So that's more geared towards uh, professors and maybe teachers, instructors that are <clears throat> teaching engineering classes and using MathCAD in their curriculum. Then we have the electrical, the mechanical worksheet library. So if I go into the electrical, we'll see things that we expect to see here, power systems. Put data analysis in here too, because oftentimes electrical engineers are analyzing large amounts of data. Okay, so data analysis will take you through um, different windowing, cleaning up, remote filtering noisy data, signal processing on that data, um, regression, interpolation. Okay, so that's why data analysis is part of this as well. Semiconductics, signal processing, of course, and topics in electrical engineering. And so then the mechanical worksheet library. This topic, mechanical engineering solve problems, I like a lot. I think that it's, it's um, very applicable. And um, I think that it's, it's a very well done topic. So there's statics and dynamics, fatigue failure. You can look at some of these titles here. Um, stress failures, equilibrium types of problems, vibrations. So if we look at um, one of these vibration problems, I'll just open this one. It's four pages. Um, spring mass system. So you can see here there are all of the input parameters and then the solution. Everything again is well documented. So I'm a big fan of the mechanical engineering solve problems. I think that um, there's the 2D plot, um, the position as a function of time, the displacement as a function of time. And so um, I think the mechanical engineering solve problems, I think that topic is is a pretty is one is really really good, and so then the quick sheet, of course. So this should give you a pretty good flavor for what the worksheet libraries are and how they're constructed and what's inside of them. So remember, each library has a collection of topics. Each topic has a collection of worksheets. Now Rourke's formulas. That one on my computer, I installed it to a different locations. So I'm going to open up a different window here. So Rourke's Formula 6th Edition, okay, remember, that's not a topic, very itself. And that actually has a contents. So if I, when you install it, you'll get two folders like we see here. And if I go into this table of contents folder, there's actually um, a contents HTML file here. We can click on that and it's going to open in Windows Explorer, okay, or Chrome. Okay, so here, this is the table of contents. So this is the only one that has a table of contents um, because we felt like it was necessary for Rourke's formulas to have a table of contents. And so this is the table of contents for the whole sixth edition of Rourke's. Now, we can come here and find the case that we want to work with and click on it and it'll open in MathCAD. So basically we're opening it from this HTML file instead of Windows Explorer. So if I want to open one of these, I'm just going to click on, so for example, Chapter 7, Table 10, I'm going to click on this one here and it's going to load this in MathCAD. Oh, let's, let's select a case here. So of these will do. So now it says, do you want to open it? I'm going to say open. Okay, and so here it is. So that's out of, straight out of the book of Rourke's formulas. And this is essentially a duplicate out of the book. Okay, so we took everything in the book and wrote it down in MathCAD. And so that's why we're seeing here, you know, things that we would see exactly if we looked this up in the book. Um, 
area moment of inertia, the length of the beam, the distance, modulus. So we would start here, change those variables to whatever our numbers are, and then the rest of it would be done. The rest of the analysis is done. So if we just scroll through here, we can see, again, everything is documented. All, the, all of the calculations, they're all done. And as we scroll through, we can see the result. There's the, the plot of the shear. Of course, position is on the x-axis in feet. It is on the y-axis in pound force. Now, make a copy of this and then work with the copy. Okay? If you don't want to plot the x-axis in feet, then you just change this here to inches or uh, meters or whatever it is. And so now you can see the x-axis. I need to rescale this. So that's, you know, that's how these work. These are a template. So a starting point template, and then you make whatever changes you want to make in order to do your work. If you want that line to be thicker, then you can come up here to the plotting tab, and you can make that line thicker. Okay? So now I just made it thicker. If you want it to be blue, you can change it to blue. So these are uh, starting points. They're templates, but the work is essentially done for you. This is the deflection plot. This is the function that calculates the deflection as a function of x, x is position. So, um, so you know, this, ex this is a perfect example, again, of where you might not necessarily want to type that in or you might not want to go look in your book of Rourke's on your, on your desk or on your shelf. You might just come in here, grab this worksheet or grab that, that formula and copy it. And so this goes on complete the whole analysis for this particular case. And here I think we're pretty close to the end. Okay. So, so that's how we use Rourke's. So Rourke's has a table of contents. Again, here it is. And so we can go back. Um, and if I scroll down, we can see Chapter 8, Curved Beams, Torsion, Chapter 10, Flat Plate. 11, 12, 13, so it's all in here. So again, this is Rourke's formula's sixth, okay? And all of these, every single thing that we see here, link to that particular chapter or that table. So if I click here, now we can select whatever case it is we're working with, click on it, it's going to open in MathCAD, okay? And so that's Rourke's formulas. So let's go back to uh, our slides here. And now we're a little bit more familiar with these topics. Okay, and so these topics, remember, each one of these topics has a collection of example files. And these topics go into the libraries. Okay, so, so there's going to be, you know, a few of these topics are going to go into a few libraries. And some of these topics may only go into one library. So you have to decide, you know, which library contains the, the topics and the examples that are going to help you the most in the work that you're doing. So let's page down. So I listed out volumes one, two, three, and four. Okay, I didn't. I didn't list out electrical engineering library or the mechanical library or the civil structural library because so I think those are pretty in pretty self-explanatory. But I listed out volumes one, two, three, and four because remember the volumes contain a cross section. So volume one is pretty meaty. It has building structural design, thermal analysis. So building thermal, thermal analysis, we didn't look at that one. But there's a lot of stuff in there on heat transfer, um, you know, working with temperatures and, and different types of um, pressure and heating and chemical 
reactions and things like that. So that one's good too. Chemical engineering, differential equations, electrical power systems, topics in electrical engineering. So topics in electrical engineering, that's kind of a um, variety of different things in electrical engineering. Microelectronics, circuit analysis, some signal processing, um, just different things from that field. Finite element beginnings, physics, and programming. Okay, so that's volume one. So volume two, volume two, analysis, statistics. So we're seeing some stuff here that wasn't in volume one. Solving and optimization, signal processing, semiconductor physics and devices. PCB analysis, mechanical engineering solved problems, quick sheets, and reference tables. The reference tables are, are pretty much tables of constants. Um, so that's volume two. So I'll go back to volume one just so that we can compare a little bit. Volume one does not have data analysis, for example. And volume two doesn't have differential equations. Okay, so these are these are almost complementary. Okay, and so now these are probably the the volumes. Volume three is a little bit shorter. Uh, it has physics, data analysis, statistics, solving and optimization, quick sheets, and reference tables. Um, so this one is more, you know, there's data analysis and statistics in here, so this is a little bit more data-oriented. Solving and optimization is, is so powerful in MathCAD that I always say if you can find some good solving and optimization examples, then um, that's, that's going to be very instrumental because that's a very, very powerful feature in MathCAD. It's very design-oriented. You can solve for design variables. You can optimize, like solve for design variables that will maximize the output of a function or minimize the output of a function. So if you have a function that calculates the surface area of a part and you want to minimize that surface area or minimize the weight of the part, but you have additional design constraints, MathCAD will tell you, for example, if we have a cube, what the length, width, and height need to be, weight or the surface area, but also have a certain volume, let's say. So solving on optimization, that's in MathCAD, that is, um, you know, really, really helps engineers um, on the design side of things. Okay, so I, I personally highly recommend that particular topic. And then volume four is pretty basic. Um, essentially, we're looking at physics and the quick sheet examples. And so those are the volumes. Um, that's what is in each volume. Those are the topics in each volume. So I'll go back to volume three just for a moment. And then I'll go back to volume two and volume one. So, on a cross-section, you have engineers, some mechanical, some electrical, um, maybe some people are doing some thermal analysis. You know, I would probably really recommend volumes one or two. If you're strictly electrical engineers, maybe go with the electrical engineering library. Strictly mechanical, maybe do the mechanical library. Um, so, um, you know, probably depends on what your needs are, but I would say all in all, and you saw yourself that these worksheet examples are really, really good references and starting points and templates and examples um, that will save so much time. I mean, essentially, you don't have to figure out how to set anything up from scratch. You don't have to take any two don't have to go through a learning process or a struggling process. You can just load up one of these worksheets and, and be on your way. 
So um, again, I'm just going to post the libraries here. And I think, Stuart, that would probably wrap up my portion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just hand the ball back over to you, and we can answer questions, um, and you can finish up with anything that you'd like to add on as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Benji. I think that was that was really good. Uh, so just quickly, um, obviously we've been talking about the MathCAD worksheets. I just wanted to let everyone know that there is a time-limited offer, which means that if you're interested in, in MathCAD, we can help you get it at a reduced rate. So we've got a couple of things going on. There's a half-off promotion. So if you're interested in MathCAD, you can get additional licenses for half the price. So it's one price, do one half price in whatever quantity. So if you buy two, four, six, eight, et cetera. And then, of course, if you're interested in the worksheets, any of the things that Angie showed today, we can combine those with CAD licenses as well to get you some additional discounts. So great opportunities, uh, a lot of great materials that, that Angie showed. Um, at this point, I'll just ask if there are any questions. Uh, if there are, you can put them in the chat session, and we'll, we'll come to them. Um, if for some reason we can't answer your question today, obviously we'll contact you, uh, get back to you on that. I'll just give everyone a chance to enter any questions that you might have. And again, uh, this was recorded, so I will send out a link to the to everyone. So that way you have a chance to see it if you wanted to go back and reference it. You know, there was a lot of material that, that Angie covered, so if you wanted that for reference, I'll be sure to share that. All right, well, I don't see any questions coming in yet. Um, oh, actually, wait, there was one question. Why do you recommend storing worksheets in program files rather than in documents? Uh, Angie, do you want to answer that? Yes, yep. Um, I am actually not necessarily recommending that. When you install the worksheets libraries, the default folder is program files but you can certainly change that and them into documents um, that probably is better um, the installer ins will by default install to program files okay and is that just to make sure that you don't overwrite the, the defaults yeah, because, um, yeah, exactly. Sometimes um, program, the content in program files is protected depending on the, um, you know, the IT control of the, of the computers, whereas documents is not protected. So it's just, I think, kind of a best practice. But it, it really doesn't make a difference, personal preference. Makes sense. All right, thanks, Angie. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I don't see any other questions, but if one does have any, please feel free to contact me. That's Stuart Weiler at Elite Aerospace Corp. Um, you can send me an email. I'll be happy to get back in touch with you. And later today, I will send out uh, just a quick summary of the things we discussed and the link to the recording. So if you have any questions, you can always just respond to that as well. Well, Angie, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and everyone else, thanks very much for joining. Have a wonderful day, everyone.